Hey guys, in today's video, we will do a Halloween inspired look with the products in my Jeffree Star mystery box and some goodies I snagged at Sephora. So the first thing that I am pulling out of my bag from Sephora is the Tatcha Water Cream. This little guy retails for $68, which is very expensive, but I have heard amazing things about this product. Uh, the packaging is gorgeous. The pot that it comes in is beautiful. It comes with its own little spatula that you can use to get your product out of the pot, which I love. I love not having to put my hands in products. We all know that can cause um, bacteria growth in your products. Not something that I'm crazy about. So it says to use a pearl size amount and apply to the skin. And um, this is supposed to be good for sensitive skin. I have rosacea and I've been dealing with a lot of patchiness lately after coming off of Accutane and a lot of different issues. I, you see I'm putting this on my eyes. I can't use eye creams. Nothing I've tried works. So I'm hoping just to be able to use this all over my face. And I'm going to wait 30 minutes after applying my moisturizer to go in with my primer. Uh, so I just applied that, I did my hair, if you can believe it, that is my hair done. And then we are going to go in with our next product. Now I do notice after waiting 30 minutes, I feel like my skin does look a little bit better, but we really can't tell how good a product works until we use it for a while. So my next product that I'm pulling out of my Sephora bag is the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. Now this is another, what is said to be a holy grail product. It retails for $52, again, super expensive. But if it is as good as they say it is, I will probably keep buying it. Now the packaging, um, does say to use a rice grain size amount, which I found to be not enough. Now, when I pulled out the instructions in the package, it actually says to use that little spatula there to fill it up to the line there that you can see. So to me, that's not a rice grain size, but um, maybe it's a different kind of rice that I'm not familiar with. I don't know. But either way, it is a very small amount that you have to use, and that is a generously sized product in my opinion. So. We're just gonna go in. I kind of like to pat my primer in, um, sort of rub it in a little bit, kind of just, you know, work it in. And then after we apply our primer, we're gonna wait about, I like to wait about five minutes for my primer to sink in before I go in with makeup. Um, now, if you're in a hurry, you can just wait a few seconds, let things sort of sink in and get going. Just like with your moisturizer, you don't have to wait 30 minutes. You can wait five to 30 minutes for your products to sink in, really. But the more you can wait, the better, in my opinion. So I like to start with my eyes. And what I'm gonna do is go in with my foundation, which is Cover FX Power Play in shade N25. And I'm just going to put that on my eyes. Now, this foundation retails for $44. Again, another relatively expensive product in my opinion. But this is the first foundation I have been able to wear since coming off of Accutane that has not aggravated my skin. So I like to just take a damp beauty sponge and blend this onto my eye area, on the eyelid, um, in between the eyes, and on top of my brow. I'm just basically setting a foundation for eyeshadow and my brows. The first thing I like to do after setting that foundation is going in with my brow color. So this is Milani in shade two, which is natural taupe, and it comes with its own brush. That is the brush I'm using there. I know I didn't show it to you. I am not a pro at this whole thing, but I'm just gonna use the spoolie end to brush my eyebrows up and just get them into sort of a shape that I kind of want. My brows are pretty unruly. They're kind of curly. Uh, so I just really try to get them where I sort of know that I want my lines to be. And it takes a minute there just to kind of work with it. My hair gets caught in my sponge or in my spoolie all the time. It drives me nuts. So I'm probably going to go grab a hair clip there and pull this mess back. <laughs> I'm doing this voiceover because if you can see in the background, my husband is back there sleeping, taking a nap. So I recorded this on my phone rather than with my GoPro. So the colors here aren't the best. The camera quality is not the best. Um, so now I'm taking the brush end of the spoolie and brow brush and I'm going into that color. I'm 
really just kind of swiping both sides of the brush in, creating a nice thin end to the brush. And then I like to start by doing the underneath of my eyebrow, just filling in anything, creating a nice sharp line as best that I can. And I don't start at the very inside of the brow closest to my nose. I start a few, um, I don't know, maybe centimeters or maybe a centimeter back from that. And I like to do both of the underneath sides of my brow first because I feel like that helps me get a more symmetrical look rather than finishing one brow and moving on to the other brow. I like to do the underneath of both and then the top of both and then kind of fill in from there. And as we know, brows are not symmetrical. Mine certainly are not. I always feel like my right brow looks better than my left. And it used to be that my left always looked better than my right. So I don't know what's happening there. So I'm just going to go in with product to try to get them as even as possible. But just know that if your brows aren't perfectly symmetrical, that is perfectly normal. And nobody's brows are perfectly symmetrical. Well, maybe some people's are, but mine certainly aren't. So I'm going to fill in the top part of my brow and I'm going to start to fill in after I get this other brow shaped up. I like to create the shape and then go in and fill it in. To me, I feel like that just gives it a nice sharp and clean look. And then we're going to go in with our color and use that spoolie eventually to sort of brush the color in to really get kind of a natural look and just blend that stuff in. Now this brow pot is almost like a pomade. It really is stiff and keeps your brows in place, which I do like, um, but it is good to use that brush there to sort of blend that color out because it does kind of stick where you put it. So once I get the color in my brows, I take any residue left on the brush and that's when I put it towards those brow hairs that are towards the center of my face. And then I'll use that spoolie and just brush those hairs towards the center to create that natural, nice, full brow look. And then I try to clean my brushes off because this stuff does stick to your brush. And I clean my brushes once a week if I'm just using them on myself. So I try to get some of that residue off of there. And then what I'm going to do is shape my brows even more with some concealer. So I am actually going to use an Aveda number no. eight brush. It says it's a foundation brush, but if you applied foundation with that, you'd be there forever. Uh, I'm going to take that brush and use my Cover Effects Concealer. And this is in shade N Fair One. Now this is pretty light for me right now because I still have some color on my face from the summer, but this is a great concealer shade for me in the winter. And I honestly don't mind having a bit of a bright um, concealer to really highlight. So we're using that Aveda number eight brush and we're dipping into the side of the brush wand in the concealer and I get a very light amount. And I'm just going to brush that right underneath my brow to really sharpen everything up. This also helps highlight the brow bone pretty nicely. And you can see there, I'm not even getting onto the tip of the wand in the concealer. I'm using residual amounts from the long plastic part of the wand so I don't get too much on my brush. A little bit of this stuff goes an extremely long way. And then I'm gonna use that damp sponge and I'm just going to blend that out. I don't like to put this concealer all over my lid at the moment, not because it doesn't work wonders, but because my eyes are extremely sensitive. The skin is sensitive. It's already patchy and red and kind of splotchy as it is. So I like to just keep this sort of right under the brow. And then if you want, you can shave the top of your brow too. I don't always do this. I do this when I'm going for a more extreme look. I do this uh, for more formal things where I want to look super fancy, but just day to day, I don't typically do that just because it saves me concealer and uh, so I don't feel like it's completely necessary all the time. And then 
once I get my eyebrows shaped, I like to just go back in with nothing on my beauty sponge. I find a space that doesn't have any product on it. And I just make sure that the foundation and the concealer is blended. There's no creasing so that I can go in with my eyeshadows. And this is the first product in my Jeffree Star Halloween mystery box is the mini breaker palette, which I was really excited about. And I'm going to use this today. We're going to go in with orange crush first. I'm going to dip the end of a Luxie number 205. That is a tapered blending brush. And I'm gonna create my transition shade with this. Now, I'm kind of just going off the top of my head when I'm doing this makeup. I didn't really have a set plan of how I wanted things to go. So there were a few things that kind of happened that I didn't plan for because I didn't have the full look imagined in my head. Um, and I'll just tell you what I mean by that later on when I find something that kind of didn't go the way I wanted it to, but it still worked out pretty good. So I like to take my transition shades and my crease shades and I really like to start towards the outer corner of my eye. I have deep set eyes and I don't like to blend a lot of darker shadows towards the center of my nose because it creates more of a shadow that I already have. So I really like to concentrate my color towards the outside and once I get a lot of the color blended out, then I blend towards the center of my face so that I don't have too harsh of shadows. Now, sometimes I do get a little extreme and I like to get crazy, but a lot of times I do play it safe there simply because of the shape of my eye. And you can see I am holding my brush towards the very end of the brush as to not add too much pressure with your brush. You'll get a better blending effect if you hold your brush a little bit lower. A lot of times I have to remind myself of this while I'm in the middle of doing my makeup, how to properly hold my brushes. We're going to tap off the excess and go in on the other side here and just do the same thing. When I got this palette, I was kind of like, oh, this was a summer palette. There aren't going to be a lot of Halloween fun shades in here. And then I opened it up and everything in here is perfect for Halloween. Orange Crush is great. There's a ton of purples in here, which is perfect for Halloween and witchy vibes. So I'm really excited to use this palette. I also like to be very gentle with blending. I find that when I'm a little more harsh and forceful with my brushes, that's when my eyes get super irritated. They're just very sensitive to anything harsh. So once we get our transition shade down, I'm gonna go in with a different brush here. This is a crown brush, and it is so worn off that it's pretty hard to see. I believe it's an ACO2 or maybe a CO12. It's the Shadow and Crease Duet, and I'm going in with that crease side. It's a very dense brush, and I'm going in with the Morphe Jeffree Star collab, and I'm going in with that bottom black shade, and I like to just draw that in first with that crease side of that brush and then blend it out because I really wanted a concentrated amount of product. I didn't want it to blend too far onto the lid and I didn't want it to blend too far up towards the brow bone. And once I got comfortable with that, I did end up putting it just directly on the blending brush, that Luxie brush and blending that out. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side with that shade Fast Lane and blend that out. And then after we get that done on both sides, we're going to use some foundation with that Aveda number no. eight foundation brush and cut the crease. I like to use this brush around my eyes because it's just, it's got that nice dome top to it that really helps me get any sort of arching motion that I want with that brush. Sometimes I do use concealer on my lid here, but I found that foundation for me with the Cover Effects Power Play is enough. And the trick here is just to take your time and blend it out as best you can and go in with very trace amounts of product. And once we get that done, we're going to go in on the other side and do the same thing. 
And then we're gonna go in with our lid color after we get this all blended out. Once that's blended, I'm gonna go in with the color Slice from the Mini Breaker palette. And that brush that I am using there is the Aveda number no. two brush. And I'm gonna take my Sephora Beauty Amplifier, which is also a setting spray or a fresh spray. I'm gonna shake that up and spray that on that color just to really help that color pop on the lid. Now this setting spray, I can't really use all over my face. I typically don't because it does have alcohol in it. I feel like it does cause a bit of itching and irritation, which is probably not the best thing to use on my eyes, but it really makes the color look amazing. You can see my husband there moving in the background, finally starting to wake up. <laughs> Just patting that color on the crease. And then once I get that done on both sides, this is where I'm starting to get creative and sort of play around a bit. I had no idea where I was going from here. It took me a minute to kind of figure things out. So I'm going back in with that transition shade, Orange Crush, with that same brush, and I'm putting that towards the middle to the um, end of my eyelid. And I'm just patting that on, really packing that shade in there to get a nice bright color. And then I'm gonna go in with the Jeffree Star Morphe collab again. We're gonna go back into the shade Fast Lane with that crown brush, with that dense crease. And I'm gonna pack that on the outer corner. Now this is where, had I known where I was going with this, I would have done something different. I would not have taken the shade Slice all the way across my lid. I would have kept it towards the inner corner to the middle because now that I'm packing this dark black on my outer corner, I have a shimmery shade underneath of it, which kind of left an effect that I didn't necessarily want. It wasn't bad and it worked out fine, but I would not have done that had I known that I was going to do a gradient. Um, I was kind of thinking I was going to do more of a cut crease and then we move sort of towards a cut crease with a gradient and it is what it is. This is why makeup is fun and why we play around. So I pack that shade in there. And then I'm going back in with that Luxie tapered blending brush and I'm just blending out that black. And I'm really sort of focusing on the black right now because there's a lot of color on this brush that we've already used. And we don't want to get that all over the eye. We kind of want to keep these things blended, but still sort of separate. And so I'm really focusing just on the outer corner right now. I am going to go back in and blend everything out in a little bit. I just like to get everything sort of laid out for the eyes before I go in with my foundation because I like to take my foundation and my under eye concealer and really create that shape or touch up any mistakes that I might have made with my eyeshadow. I see a lot of people that like to use um, tape to create a nice sharp line and I personally just never liked that it never worked for me um and also with having the most sensitive skin on the planet i feel like any sort of residue from tape being on my face just it caused just issues so i just like to go in and sometimes i do my foundation first if i'm going to have a more blended look that doesn't really need to be super sharp i won't do this um because it is a bit more of a hassle but if i know i really want a nice clean sharp line this is kind of how I do it. So once I get that all blended out and I just check, make sure everything's kind of how I want it, then we're going to go in with foundation. And I am using a Sephora foundation brush here. This is a full coverage foundation brush. And I'm going back in with that Cover Effects in shade N35, N25. 
And sometimes I start at the forehead, sometimes I start at the jawline, sometimes I start at the neck. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Today we are blending down from the jawline and the neck and we're gonna work our way up. Now this is my first time using this primer with this foundation. I absolutely love this foundation. It is such full coverage. It covers the redness from my rosacea, um, but it, it can get chalky if you don't use the right primer. I have a ton of primers in my station and some of them do not work with this. Um, so I'm really excited to see how this works because a lot of times when I use this foundation, if I'm not using the proper things underneath, it does feel tight and dry and chalky. So my brush is working smoothly over my skin here, which I love. This is kind of the first time that I'm seeing this with this foundation. Now, I did also just start using this foundation not long ago too, so I am still kind of learning how I like things done here, but... I am loving this combo so far. And I just start to slowly work with that foundation under my eye. When I use my brush, I don't sort of define my eyes right away. I like to just lay everything down with the brush because it is a fuller coverage. And just blend everything in, sort of get the big things covered. I just love how that redness just goes away and it just looks so nice. Now my skin is textured and it's always going to be textured and it's always going to have redness and, you know, patchiness. And I know that my skin's not going to look like everybody else's when they use a foundation like this, but I really do love this foundation and how it makes me feel once I've got it on and I feel like I look like everybody else. So once I get my first layer down, I like to build coverage with this foundation. That's what I love about it. And so I go in with that damp beauty sponge and I take a little bit more product, not a lot, and I just start to really blend it in. And this is where I start to get into the nooks and the crannies and make sure that everything is blending the way I want it. And I just like to build a little bit more coverage on those areas that might um, be showing through, get those brows, get that concealer covered that's on top of those brows. Now from being on Accutane, I have some fine lines on my forehead. Now I have done research and I have read that they are supposed to go away because Accutane is a retinoid. It is supposed to make you look younger, but how severely dry it makes you can cause some temporary fine lines that do go away after your skin starts to uh, produce more oil. But that is another reason why I did buy the Tatcha Moisturizer because it is anti-aging and I feel like that is something that I'm starting to need as I get into my late 20s. And I like to get a mirror and get kind of really close in and look around and see where there's anything that needs blended. There's that spot on my left temple that I swear I do notice in a minute. Just give it a second. And this is where I start to define my eye makeup and get close to the underneath of my eyes. And when I go in with concealer, I'll define that even more. I personally like to build my foundation, build my coverage with a more thin layers rather than one big thick layer. And once I get my foundation in, I am going to use the e.l.f. eyeliner brush. It is the angled eyeliner brush and I dip that into my concealer and I just really put a tiny focused amount on any areas that might be showing through my foundation. I have the type of rosacea that likes to almost look like acne, so which is really frustrating after going on Accutane and thinking that you're cured of acne and then you have something else that looks exactly like it. But it's better than cystic acne, so I guess I can't complain. So once I get 
that concealer on, I take that beauty sponge and I take the pointed end and I really try, I turn my head to the side as you saw there and I focus the point of that blender right onto that spot and I blend it out. And then on some areas I'll use the flat end and just sort of buff it out a little bit. Right about here I noticed that spot on my temple that didn't blend out. There it is, thank God. When I had cystic acne, I used to spend way more time than this covering imperfections. So I am truly grateful for being on Accutane. And I am confident that hopefully my rosacea will go away soon. So now you can see that we are highlighting here. So I'm taking that concealer. That was a little bit too much for me. Um, this concealer, like I said before, a little goes a very long way. And even though I have kind of a larger forehead, that was not a necessary amount. So I just try to find an end of the sponge that might not have as so much product on it and blend that out a little bit. And I like to work in sections here. This concealer does sort of just like the power play foundation the power play concealer does tend to kind of set quickly so you want to work in sections and you can see here that's about the amount that you want for an area um you know i know that we typically like to make a triangle with our concealer underneath the eyes to pull the light where we want it i'm going to make that triangle with that small amount that i put on my eye and here i'm really sharpening the end of that eyeshadow towards my outer crease, sort of shaping that to go up and wing up towards my temple. And then we're going to blend that down and create that triangle with that concealer. You can see how much concealer you really need for that large of an area, which is something that I love about this concealer. People, when I was reading the reviews before I bought it, people were, um, complaining about the size of the product, but it's really, for how little you need, it's actually not that bad. We're just going to do the same thing on the other side. Create that shape you want, and now that eyeshadow is really starting to pull together and look pretty great. And then I'm just going to highlight my nose, my chin, and underneath my jaw. And this doesn't take too long to blend out, so I do put it all on my face at once and just blend it out really quick. And I am noticing here that this concealer here on my jaw is blending a lot easier than it was with any other primer. And then once I get my concealer on, I like to take that damp beauty sponge, grab a mirror, get nice and close up and personal and just check everything. Make sure nothing's creasing. Make sure everything's where it needs to be. Make sure it's exactly how I want it. Make sure the under eyes aren't creasing and wrinkling. Checking in with those fine lines on my forehead, making sure they're filled in nice. And then I'm going in with the Makeup Forever HD Setting Powder. Now this is an intense setting powder. You're gonna see here in a minute that I do make a little bit of an error. I'm going in with the Aveda number nine. It's a blush brush. And I kind of had too much on the brush there and it got a little cakey up there at the top of my forehead. I will blend that out in a moment. But seriously, the tiniest amount you can see there I'm going in with the brush now that there's no product on it or less product and I'm trying to blend that out. I'm blending it onto my temples. I'm blending it onto the bridge of my nose there, trying to get that all to blend out a bit. You can see that's a tiny amount. You tap off the excess. It looks like there's nothing on the brush and that's where you want it for. And look how great that looks underneath the eyes. That's the amount that you want. And I'm going to take that even off of underneath the eyes. And I'm going to work that onto the nose. Because a little goes a long way. Especially with this foundation. This is a matte foundation to begin with. And this is a very blurring sort of correcting setting powder. So you really want to just be mindful of that you're using the tiniest amount. 
And then we're gonna contour with the Cheek Leaders palette from Benefit. I love this palette. I got this for my wedding, it's super cute. We're gonna go in with the shade Hula with that same brush and just start to contour. This is where I can kind of get that area blended out there that looks a little bit unblended and just we're gonna do our contour and add our blush here, all with this same brush. I love this brush because it really, I just feel like works for pretty much everything when it comes to contouring the face. And I'm just really trying to work that area that I got too much setting powder And it eventually all will work out here. We're gonna continue contouring and adding our blush. And now that we're back, we're gonna go in with the shade Tickle in this palette for our highlight. And I'm just gonna highlight my nose, my cheeks, my cupid's bow, and my chin. And once we're done with that, we're gonna go back in and finish up the eyes with little fine touches. So now I'm going to take a clean blending brush, which is my Aveda number uh, seven maybe. These are really worn off. They're really um, old. I've been using them a lot. So I take that clean blending brush and I just start to blend everything out, making sure everything is happy and together and all working like a team to make this nice look. Blending that orange out a little bit. And once I'm done with that, we're gonna work the lower lash line. So I'm going to grab an Aveda number five. And we're gonna go into the shade in the Mini Breaker palette, Oral and we're gonna put that on the lower lash line. This shade was so pretty. I wish I would have used more of it on other places and maybe foregone the orange and the yellow so much, but I did like this look. It was pretty cute for Halloween. But this was a shade that I would just love to put everywhere. This would be a fun shade if you're doing a mermaid makeup look this Halloween. And I used a lot and I didn't really get a ton of fallout. I was not even tabbing off the excess because I loved it and I just wanted it to be super packed in there. I don't know why my nose just started running and I feel like I have to sneeze and I've gotten so far along in this video that I don't want to start over. So I'm sorry that you can hear me sniffling. love it so then once we do that I grab my liner here which Jeffree Star would be rolling if he saw me using this this is the Kat Von D tattoo liner in black um, it's really the only liner that I have found to work for me it has a nice thin felt tip I'd really like to try something other than felt tip eyeliners because I feel like they are just kind of a pain and here you see that I just realized that I forgot something so I need to highlight the eyes. So I'm going in with my Tarte Chrome Paint Pot in Top Yacht. That is a mouthful. And I'm gonna take that same brush that I used underneath my lash line, the number five from Aveda. And I'm gonna get the excess um, shadow off of there from underneath my eyes. And I'm gonna put that right in the corner. A very concentrated amount. I don't really fan it out too much. I just like it to be very concentrated. And then after I get this done in the inner corner, I'm going to go in with another spoolie brow brush duo that I have. I used the one from Milani for my brows. And then I have another one from Aveda. Now this is actually the number seven. So that blending brush must be the number six. And I just take that brow brush and again, a very concentrated amount from the arch of my brow out to the tail of my brow. 
and then later on I will blend that out with that clean blending brush, the number six. Kind of make sure everything's nice and even here. And now that that's done, we're going to go in with our liner. And I'm not sure here what I want to do, if I want to do a wing or if I just want to do liner. I always do a wing. I honestly, I was watching a makeup tutorial the other day and someone said that they weren't going to do a wing and that they were just going to do their liner and I honestly for a minute I was like well what do you do what do you do if you don't do a wing and then I'm like oh well yeah I guess that is a thing <laughs> so I thought about it here I thought about maybe I will not mess up my eyes with my completely uneven wings and I'll just do regular nice sleek liner and you can see here, I'm sh I shake my felt tip liner and I really use the side of the felt tip rather than using the point. I think a lot of people use the point thinking that that is where the most product is, but it actually the most product is sitting in the sides of that brush and it really helps you to use the side of the brush and also to stop and pause anytime you start to feel like you're having to work harder and shake it again and hold it so that gravity pulls that product towards the end. So I'm just evening everything up here. And then here I decide, oh, no, we're gonna do a wing. <laughs> I'm holding that liner so that the product pulls to the bottom. And then here I'm kind of using you. What you really want to do is use your iris almost as a measuring point. Use your eyebrow as a measuring point. But once I get my colors done too, I'll also use my eyeshadow colors as sort of an anchor to decide I want my tail of my wing to start flaring up towards the black in my outer corner. And I want to start curving my tail towards the orange or you know whatever so we're gonna do that on the other side and just like eyebrows wings are never perfectly symmetrical I mean I'm sure somebody out there is really good at it but I'm not I just love a winged eyeliner especially when you're doing something dramatic like this to begin with so once we get that going we're gonna put on our mascara now, I never curl my lashes, ever, but I do sometimes like to curl them when I know I'm going to be using false lashes because I feel like they just kind of blend with your lashes a little bit better. And then I'm going to go in with my mascara. Now, my mascara had been sitting between my thighs for this whole thing. I usually put it in my bra, but I wasn't wearing one at this time because I had just gotten out of the shower. So I just like to put my mascara somewhere where it will be warm because when you warm up your mascara, it actually applies a lot better. So try that next time. Put it in your bra, put it in your pants pocket and sit on it or put it between your thighs and see how much better it applies. And this is the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara, which I use all the time whether I'm using falsies or just using my own. Now, here are the other products I got in my mystery box. I'm not using all of them today, obviously, because I got a lot of lip stuff. But I'm going to show you everything. Now, this is a Velour Liquid Lip from Jeffree Star. It's a pain to see because this is my phone camera and it doesn't want to focus on anything but my pretty face. So that is Family Jewels. And Family Jewels is a really nice brownish shade super pretty but it's not what we want to use today we're going pretty dramatic we're going more on the halloween side so this i'm pretty excited about this is a lip 
Ammunition in the shade Glazed, which I need to cover the light so you can see. This is a fun little topper. Look how pretty that is. And look at it on my hand when I swatch it. How gorgeous is that? But again, not what we want to use today. What we want to use today is this bad boy right here. This is the exclusive shade that was made for these boxes. This is the shade Soul Sucker, and I'm super excited. I've always wanted to try black lipstick, but I've never been brave enough, and now here is my chance. So what I'm going to do is apply my Ardell Wispy Lashes. I'm going to apply that lipstick. I'm going to set my face, and I'll be back. And this is the finished look here. Now that lipstick is gorgeous. It's got some gold flakes of glitter in it, which I love. It does feel a little different than your regular liquid lipsticks because of that glitter, but it was fun to wear out and I loved it.